grew up in a Mexican household. My parents really did not know anything about CF. Uh, it doesn't run in our family. I mean, there's nobody before me who has it. Um, so this was very, very new to them. Grew up in a lot of Mexican food. So a lot of greasy stuff, which meant a lot of stomach aches sometimes. The symptoms I had were that I noticed was coughing a lot. Um, I did take a few pills, but I didn't like connect the two, like that I was sick. I just thought everybody went to the hospital every three months, like no big deal. You just lose appetite, you lose cravings, you lose your hunger. And when I felt really, really good, I could eat. But when I start feeling sick, I the food made me sick. For any of us, if we do not have an appetite for something, it doesn't particularly look good to us or taste good to us. And so when you have a very high calorie requirement and you may be trying to eat 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 calories more than you have an appetite for, it becomes a real burden for people. I didn't struggle so much in eating. I think it was just gaining weight. I think I always had an appetite. I think it was more in junior high where things were like really tiring and I became aware that I needed to eat more. I think I was like 11 or 12. I did countless calorie counts. And I think one time the nutritionist told me I was eating like 5,000 calories a day. So I was like, yikes. My size was very small. I was probably like 13 or 14 then I actually like, wow, I am really skinny. I looked really sick. Um, some people thought I was anorexic. Veronica was a very ill teenager with cystic fibrosis. When I first met her, she was extremely underweight and she had very poor lung function. Um, Veronica, as a teenager, was very thin um, and had gotten to a point where she said, I just cannot eat anymore, even though her family thought, oh, we'll do this on our own and, you know, eat our way through it. And she just knew she couldn't eat anymore. The first time I learned about tube feeding, I think I was 13 maybe. They actually introduced the NG tube, the one that goes through your nose. I tried it. The only, I think the biggest mistake we did was we did it after dinner. So that was not a good thing. And then we actually tried it on, a, we tried it again later at night when I was completely empty. Um, I did not like it. It was really, it was bothering my throat a lot. I hated coughing with it. I hated, I hated swallowing it because you could feel it. She tried nasogastric tube feedings during some hospitalizations and did not tolerate them. So although it took her a little while, she did make the decision to have a gastrostomy tube put in. The g tube became an option when I was 14. It was during a hospitalization. Um, I either had a choice between trying the NG again or having the g tube placed, which was obviously involving surgery. Uh, I asked a lot of questions. I also saw a few kids having them. I was willing to try the NG one more time, and it didn't work. So I went with the G-tube instead. My mom was all for it. My dad was a little like, I don't know. I don't know if she get it because of surgery. And you know, his thing was, you just need to eat more. And I'm like, I can't do it anymore. It was my first time ever having surgery. So I was afraid of like feeling things or you know, like, you didn't give me, you know, you didn't knock me out enough. But it was so quick. She too would change things a lot. My life became more of a routine. I was more in charge of it, not my mom. Because it was mine. I, was, I had decided to get it. Plus, you know, I needed to learn how to do it. When I first got my G-tube, um, the, I ended up getting, I gained weight, like, slowly. I think I gained, like, 20 pounds in, like, three months. My hunger actually came back. I was actually able to like crave and have an appetite for food again. And it really hasn't gone away. My confidence after the G-tube uh, went up a lot, I think. <laughs> uh, I looked healthier. Uh, I think others saw that too. It was actually very flattering. Clothes fit me better. My sister graduated from high school. And I remember we developed the pictures. And I remember looking at myself and I'm like, that doesn't look like me. It didn't look like really skinny or pale or malnourished or 
it looked good. My health after the G-tube, um, I still got sick a little bit. Um, I think the weight kind of just, and the, the energy that I got from the G-tube just carried me throughout high school. And I think after I got out of high school, things just got better. More of the weight came on after I graduated. More steady and my health became um, more in control. Like I was able to control it much better. There is no doubt in my mind that Veronica would not have survived to be the age she is now had she not started enteral feeding. Looking at her as a teenager and now as an adult, I'm quite convinced that that's the case. She's been able to stabilize her lung function um, and been able to maintain her weight now on her own and in fact um, just uses tube feeding on an occasional basis. However, she doesn't currently plan to get rid of the G-tube just because she feels like, you know, if I were to get sick or if, you know, something were to happen, I just can't eat my way back to this weight. I like having the G-tube for the security um, I know it provides. I did my G-tube uh, five nights out of the week. I used four cans of a uh, supplement and I think it was five years or six years I was doing that and then it became like less, like four nights. And eventually four cans was just too much. <laughs> so I back to three, and now it's just uh, two cans twice a week, just to you know get a few extra vitamins and minerals and things that I might be missing out. The G2 does not give me any restrictions. I go swimming. I still wear you know one pieces, two pieces, just depends on the mood I'm in. Doesn't stop me. I do lay occasionally on my stomach. If I'm doing my feedings, I don't lay on my stomach. The advice I would give somebody um, is just to consider it, uh, learn more about it, maybe ask a few patients who have it. Um, not to rule it out, you know. It just it, it would be an added bonus to get a few extra calories, since we tend to burn off calories much quicker if we have, we're having trouble breathing.